I want to take the opportunity just to talk about Europe and the ECB because yesterday uh, Bloomberg had this story out talking about the ECB revamping in its, its inflation goal uh, in sort of the twilight of the Draghi era and the market took this as a dovish signal. We saw BTP bun spread tightening, we saw the euro hit a session low. When we were talking about the US earlier, you were saying that the market's maybe gone too far in terms of its pricing around the Fed. With the ECB, could the ECB go further than the market expects in terms of stimulus? Yeah. So I think the, the reason that stories like this uh, gain a lot of attention and mm. can lead to moves in the market is one of the main things on the market's mind is you know how much further can the ECB move how much can they can they react and I think what's interesting about those stories is that that if they did change the inflation target that would at least show they have a willingness to be more reactive mm. but I think really what's key is uh, announcements around what they could could do so, you know, our expectations are that we will see uh, 20 basis points of rate cuts over the course of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we think tiering will be introduced. And also, very importantly, we think that they will uh, announce a restart of QE by the end of this year. Mm. So we think that the ECB are going to move uh, to being more, more reactive. And the rate cuts start when for you? In September? So, or? so we think September. You know, uh -huh. the key thing for next week is, uh, is mainly around the forward guidance uh, and that they do give an indication that they will be willing to, to lower rates. Mm. But we think it's probably too soon given some of the conversations that appear to be going on in the background between the governing council. Yeah. Probably too soon to expect yeah. a rate cut uh, and I think next week. Economists agree with you. They sort of see the ECB priming markets this month for the rate cuts. What does this mean for the euro? Does the euro react strongly to the dovishness that you've just described. Yeah, so this is an interesting thing. So mm. while we are more, uh, I'd say, aggressive on the ECB outlook than the, than the market and the consensus, mm. we're actually bullish on euro dollar. Why? And that's really a, a relative story. You mm. know, we are bearish on the euro. We think euro is going to decline versus uh, the yen. Uh, but we think with the, the relative story that we think that the dollar is going to react more to the Fed than the euro can react to the ECB. Mm. And in rates, how are you trading this then? You've got some thoughts around the five-year, five-year. Yeah, yeah. Mm. so we think that uh, where you've had the, the rise of yields over the last couple of weeks, that's gone too far. We think because the ECB is going to be uh, more active, then that means you should be re receiving five-year, five-year. So essentially looking for yields in Europe to continue to decline. Right. And what does it mean for the curve, though? Does the curve, the euro curve, need to steepen? So, well, we think that actually you've seen, so you've seen a steepening of the curve more recently. Mm -hmm. uh, we think we'll probably get a flattening again. However, we don't think that's where the trade is. We think the trade is probably more in uh, spread products. So where you've seen a flattening of the curve over the last couple of months, normally that would result in a compression of spreads. You've seen that in things like uh, Germany, Italy, but you've not seen it so much in uh, in credit spreads. Mm. So we think that uh, we could see credit spreads continue to narrow in Europe, particularly as if the ECB starts QE again, it's going to be including a corporate bond buying program.